they were 1-22 in their last 23 road games until they beat Tennessee, and now they do it again. Two straight road wins for the first time. Back-to-back -back wins on the road for the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's so impressive in the rain last Thursday as they beat the New York football Jets victorious to get to 7-8 and eight on the year. And now your Jacksonville Jaguars are in first place. We're at Sneakers tonight hanging out with a lot of Duval. Pumped up and ready to roll. Oh, yeah, you hear him. You hear him. And we also got Danny Arnold here tonight, Jaguars tight end. Give it up for Dan. How are you? Congratulations. Merry Christmas. Yeah, thank you. Merry Christmas to yourself, too. What a great victory. Would Talk a little bit about Thursday and just the aftermath and see how this thing has played out. I mean, you guys are playing the best football of the year at the right time of the year, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, Doug talked about playing meaningful football games in December, and... Um, you know, that's all you can hope for right now, and we're ready to take on the challenge. Yeah. I know one of the things we mentioned is just the ascension of Trevor Lawrence, uh, doing it with his arms and his legs as one of his top targets out there. You've seen the progress of Trevor as the season has gone along, but mostly in these last seven games. Yeah, I think mostly with him it was just he finally was getting that confidence boost, and once we got that, you know, start swinging and get a couple wins under the belt, the kid's, the kid's just the most talented probably quarterback I've, I've, I've been around in a while so you just love to see him sling the ball and he just he's making the right decisions and just bringing the whole team along with him tell us how bad the conditions were Thursday night for the folks who weren't <laughs> up there it looked like it was raining sideways and I thought you guys did a good thing and Trevor you know using his legs a little bit more he had 51 yards rushing uh, just tell me about the conditions out there yeah um, <laughs> you know being from Wisconsin I didn't I didn't bother you it wasn't that bad <laughs> for me but uh, yeah some of those guys from Alabama and Florida I'm sure were a little cold um, it was a little drippy um, but other than that I think we handled the elements you know we had that Philly game earlier in the year that was soaking wet as well and we kind of learned from that approached our practice game practice playing a little bit differently and uh, we're prepared for it we, we talk about the numbers a lot in this business, and we take a look at Trevor Lawrence over these last seven games and the numbers that he has put up. We'll take a look at it. 16 total touchdowns against just one interception, 2,100 total yards. That's quick math, 300 a game, throwing and running. Pretty good. If you were to do this over a full season, you're talking 5,100 total yards, 39 total touchdowns, running and passing and only two interceptions. <laughs> yeah. That sounds pretty good. That's, That's crazy. That, that would though. work. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I know you've been a big believer in Trevor, and you guys have developed a great friendship, uh, but it's been fun for the fans to kind of watch his ascension and become the player that everybody was hoping that he was going to become here in Jacksonville. Yeah. I think, it, you know, in all honesty, it had a lot to do with more just, I felt like, hands off from the yeah. coaches and just kind of let him go out and do his thing. You know, they drafted him number one overall for a reason, and they believed in this kid from day one. And uh, you're just letting him go out and play his brand of football, and he's, he's doing what he knows he can do. How was the Christmas party over at the Lawrence house? Well, I saw some pictures. It looked like it was a fun time. Yeah, it was. Anything it was, you can let us in on? Uh, um, <laughs> What happens you know, at the Lawrence house stays at the Lawrence yeah. house. All right. <laughs> Let's just say we were. Uh, or anything, did you? Uh, we busted out the karaoke machine and it got it got pretty uh, <laughs> pretty crazy. But no, it was good. It was good to just relax with all the guys. So. Yeah, some of the karaoke footage made it to social media. Oh so gosh. That, that did make it on there. Well, let's get back to the offense for this Jaguars team and a huge milestone for one of the young guys on the team in Travis Etienne. Uh, as one of the tight ends, you're out there blocking for this guy. He hits that 1,000-yard mark and joins a great group of Jacksonville Jaguars to have achieved that. How big is that for ETN in just his second year in the league? Yeah, really, his sure. first year because he missed the whole first right. year. Right, yeah. No, it's something that you, know, you can hang your hat on, and, and you just love being around a kid that's going to work hard for you. That kid practices his butt off, and, and he's, he's just someone that you want to you go out there and block for in the way he's kind of handled the season, you know. Um, but he, the sky's the limit for him, too. The kid is an incredibly talented runner, and he runs hard, which That's you love. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm really, you know, I thought he was in kind of an outside guy so fast. Obviously, I think yeah. he had 70-plus touchdowns at Clemson. But this kid runs it up in between the tackles, and he takes some shots, and he joins an exclusive club uh, with the Jacksonville Jaguars who have been able to go over 1,000 yards. There's some pretty good names on there, by the way, if we look at them um, yeah, we well, gonna left Fred off. I guess he's on the next list, but Must Freddie, be the next one, yeah. Mojo, Leonard Fournette, <laughs> and James Robinson as well, all over a thousand yards for the Jaguars. You were able, you were able to contribute as well on uh, on Thursday with your hands as well. I know you like to get out there and get a catch. You actually had a couple, but one got called back. But this was part of a really good drive by you guys. 
Yeah, definitely um, kind of that tone setter drive that you want to go down and, and put a score in kind of after how we had started the game. Um, you know, it just we go out there and we make plays when, we, when they come our way. And it's interesting that we talk about, you know, all the athletes that we got. I think we have four guys on the team who have all had 100-yard games. Right. Like, that's something that you don't really see on a, a lot of other teams and how we spread the ball and everybody's getting a, a bite of the pie. Really hard to game plan for, by the way, for the uh, opposition when you've got all these different guys that can go and catch a ball. <laughs> but yeah. no pro bowlers. What the heck? Uh, I mean, what's going on? Hey, let's check out our power play of the week. Power play of the week. Sponsored by IBEW Local 177. Powering Jacksonville since 1912. Thank you, Brotherhood. It happened early in the game. This was big because Trevor did have a fumble early on. And the Jets were knocking on the door, Dan. And Andre Sisko blitzed off the edge and just blasted uh, Zach Wilson, who kind of had a tough night there. But that was a big play for the defense, I thought. Yeah, absolutely. Those are the kinds of plays, you know, Thursday night games, it's all about starting fast. And uh, cisco has been making those hard hits all year. Um, I can think of the Kansas City game, just thinking back, like, wow, I'm glad we don't, like, go live against those guys a lot <laughs> during practice. <laughs> <laughs> However, you're a smart guy, so why don't you explain how the playoffs work here? You, you did good on the SAT. I'm just a <laughs> read scores, so you can tell people. Look, look it's pretty do. simple. You All beat right. the Titans in the last game of the season, you win the division. That's, yeah, I got that. That is the simplest way to do it. Uh -huh. Now, there are some possible wild card situations uh -huh. where if you, you beat the Texans next week, and then if whatever happens, happens in that last week, there are still some ways to get in. But easy, easy enough. Week 18, at home beat the Tennessee Titans. Dan, one of the things going around is, is, well, this game is meaningless. Well, first off, there are no NFL games that are meaningless. But mm -hmm. secondly, you, there is a scenario where you win against Houston Sunday, lose to the Titans, and still get a wild card. In other words, you guys are still in contention for a wild card. I can't imagine we're going to rest starters. Yeah, no, I don't, that's not within the game plan. Yeah. Um, you know, Doug's mentality the whole season has been, you know, go 1-0. and oh. Play the game in front of you. It's a faceless opponent. Yeah. Um, that's kind of how we're looking at this week. Momentum keeps going. We, you know, and yeah. plus, listen, the one thing that this team has done, you guys, you've been able to exercise a lot of the ghosts, right? I mean, the, the losing streaks here. So Can't beat an NFC team. Can't yeah. win on the road. Well, Houston has won a few in a row here against the Jags, so it would be nice to go out there and beat those guys. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of the guys on the team kind of have a bitter taste in their mouth from the first game this season. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> we're looking forward to it. All right, let's take a look at the game plan and see how the Jags did as they got ready for the game against the Jets. It's time for the game plan, sponsored by TIAA Bank. So we targeted playing aggressive as the game plan against the Jets. Well, there's a lot of field goals in this game. Uh, five attempted, four made. Yeah. But here's the point. They didn't have to get super aggressive simply because of the way Wilson and the Jets' offense was playing. Yeah. They couldn't do anything against the Jaguars' defense. So a little bit of a pivot from what we were saying in the game plan and play smart. And that's what they did. They got the points when they were available, and they took advantage of the field position. Yeah, Doug Peterson even eschewed a fourth down and short one time they for did. a field goal that they ended up not making, but nonetheless seemed to work out because you guys were kind of you know, you never say in the NFL because we've seen so many comebacks, but you really were in control of that game. Did you have that feeling on the sideline? Yeah, um, I think after after that second drive, we definitely could tell. Um, but that's those those Thursday night games. They're kind of they're kind of a different breed of animal. Yeah. it's all about you know starting the game strong and fast. I think the win percentage of leading in the halftime is like 85 percent or something like that. Yeah. Um, so you really just try and win the first half, and then you know keep guys fresh for the second half. But yeah, it came down to completions. Um, Trevor just being smart with the ball, which we were, and then running the ball, you know, getting, getting Travis to that 100, 100K mark or 1K mark. And, you know, that was, that was the game plan was run, run the dang ball. The drive of the day, driven by your local Ford dealers. Kind of one of those where you really, boy, it was beautiful. Great play calling, I thought. You ran when we thought you'd throw. You throw when we thought you'd run. 16 plays. 96 yards, chewed up a lot of time. It's great, great drive. Yeah, um, I think that comes down to a lot of stuff we practiced in training camp. Um, Coach Peterson has these extended drive drills that he likes to do where you do Seem 18 plays. Seem to have a plays, bunch of them this year. And uh, you hate them as a player, and gosh, <laughs> it, it sucks when it's 100 degrees out and all humid, but it definitely made it worth it when you have wins, you know, coming like this. It does feel like the games where the Jaguars are winning, they seem to at least have one of these 
in every single one of those games. That super long drive, you start inside your own 10, but it doesn't matter. You go 12 to 15 plays, you eat up the clock, as you said, and once again, it leads to another victory. Yeah, I think that third and goal, by the way, was their first third down of that whole drive. It was really a great, great drive. Unfortunately, not everything was, was good, and I don't know, that field, does that bother you at all, the turf? I mean, we've had two Jags two years in a row tear their Achilles up there. What yeah, um, it's definitely, we see, you know, handouts and stuff sent from the PA about voting on yeah, no, grass. field turf conditions, yeah. and we'll see what happens, you know, in the next couple of years on whether they pass new stuff for the CBA. I don't know if CBA. it's, can you tell when you're playing on it? Um, I mean, any turf is going to grab, yeah. and that's just yeah. the unfortunateness of it, but... Um, yeah, you definitely, you pray for those guys yeah. that do get affected by it well, and hope it doesn't happen. And MetLife Stadium has said they're going to change the turf after this year. Oh, okay. So that's at least one of these NFL places. Doesn't help, but yeah. Yeah. It doesn't help the Jaguars now because <laughs> uh, these two players, Cam Robinson and Dewan Smoot, uh, officially put on the injured reserve earlier today, uh, ending their season. Uh, it, it's getting towards that time of the year where you start to see kind of the depth of these NFL rosters because players are going to go down. It's the nature of the business. Yeah, and I think it has, we've been, for the most part, pretty safe from it this year, and yeah. it has a lot to do with the way that we practice. Um, you practice hard, you kind of prepare your body for those bumps and bruises, but yeah, you have freak stuff like that happen, and, and you only feel for those guys, and, and it, it's, it's the crappy part of the game. It is, and it's part of the game, we all know that. Let's bring in Liv Tassley right now. She has more on the dreaded Achilles injury. This injury report is brought to you by Flagler Health, orthopedic Jaguars specialists. Jaguars defense has taken another hit, this time for the rest of the season and the team's potential playoff run. In this post, defensive end Dwan Smoot announced Saturday that an MRI confirmed he tore his Achilles in Thursday night's win against the Jets. For more on the injury, let's bring in Dr. Garrett Schwartzman over at Flagler Health Plus. So the Achilles is the, the big tendon you can feel in the back of your ankle, and it inserts on your heel, uh, which we call the calcaneus. That's the, your heel bone itself. And it can tear, in, again, in multiple different spots, but um, sometimes when it tears, it, it does roll up the leg, and you can, you can visualize it and see it. There's lots of different techniques for uh, Achilles surgery and, um, and for therapy as well, and it's kind of the same thing as an ACL. So once the athlete feels ready, they've cleared their uh, return to play testing, and they've gotten the clearance from their uh, treating surgeon, then, then they can, they're safe to return. Smoot is tied with outside linebacker Josh Allen for the team lead in sacks with five, making this year the fourth consecutive season in which Smoot has had at least five sacks. For the Flagler Health Plus Injury Report, I'm Olivia Tassley, Action Sports Jax. <laughs> oh, Trevor Lawrence bringing joy to... Jacksonville all over. Oh, it's on backwards, but that's okay. He wanted to show everybody his Trevor Lawrence jersey he got for Christmas. Welcome back to Sneakers, everybody. Stuart Weber, Dan Hicken. Dan Arnold is here as well, Jaguars tight end. And uh, it's the most wonderful time of the year, Dan. I mean, how was Christmas for you? Did you have a good Christmas? Yeah, uh, relaxing. Got to spend time on the couch and watch football and just hang out with the wife and dogs. Mm -hmm. so, well, nothing good. wrong with that. Nothing wrong at all. <laughs> Not much better. Around the league, this is the time of year where you get to see these extravagant gifts, yeah. usually quarterbacks, giving mm -hmm. it to the players that have been protecting them all year in the okay. offensive line. You got but a couple examples? We got some examples all right, here. show me what we got here. Let's, uh, let's take a look, and how about some new sticks? Oh. oh. Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City has found out his offensive linemen all like to play golf, so some custom-made bags and some sticks for those guys. He can afford it, I think, Dan. Oh, yeah. He should, <laughs> should be able to. <laughs> what not, else you got? Not bad at all. How about Isaiah McKenzie okay. giving arcades to the wide receivers for his teammates on the Bills, all custom-made. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. You got the wide receiver coach getting one, too? Wow. <laughs> well, when is a player by the coach a gift I'm not like going to say anything, but Isaiah McKenzie has not signed like a gigantic contract, I don't think. That's very giving. <laughs> yeah. You got one more for me? Yeah, you got, got the irony of all ironies? Oh, the irony. Oh, dear. So Zach Wilson supporting his guys with some scooters. Oh, no. Unfortunately, we all saw Zach Wilson's possibly his last game of the yeah. year. Uh, it's already been announced that he will be inactive for next week's game. They got Mike White back. To play Mike White's back, and Joe Flacco is going to back him up. You were up there. I'm watching it on television. The ca cascade of boos on the kid, as soon as he missed a pass, you could tell that 
But you can see in his eyes the lost confidence. He's got to find his mojo. I mean, if you're not a confident football player at that level, you're, you're dead, aren't you? Yeah, um, I think it's one of those things, having gone through, you know, confidence depletion like yeah. that, um, you kind of just assess yourself in the offseason, you come back, and, uh, you know, you, you, get your, you get your head right, and you talk to the people that you need to talk to, and um, it's a fickle game sometimes, but yeah. you really got to be a master of your own mind a lot, and uh, be able to overcome those obstacles. As great athletes as they are, the mental part is huge. Yes, yeah, absolutely, for sure. especially with you know, social media now, and uh, you get it crammed oh yeah. down your throat, so. Ah, sunshine and rainbows, and it has not been hard lately to find positive things to talk about with the Jacksonville Jaguars, that they've been playing some amazing football, but sunshine and rainbows, we're not talking about meaningful December football. No. We're talking about meaningful January football. Yes. How about that, as the Jaguars... Four seed, hosting... Got to stay there. We love the division leaders category because you yeah. get to be over there and you're not smaller on the right. Let's give a shout out to Roy Roberts and Harris. He had a great game on uh, Thursday night, man. He made a couple plays in a row that were beneficial. And I thought Mike Caldwell's done a nice job of late, too. He caught a lot of criticism early on, and he's tried a bunch of different things. And a lot of it has worked. So anyway, congrats to him and the staff. Coaches make a big difference, don't they, Dan? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think Roy, too, you know, you, you shout him out as a player, but as a leader, too. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's one of those guys that commands the locker room, and you love having him around. All right, I, before we get out of here, I got to do a shout out to my neighbors, the Bavaros. Great, great neighbors uh, and great New York people. <laughs> but there they are, and they're watching the show. Shout out, Bavaros. Yeah, they're Jets fans. And so they're buying me dinner tonight, people. How about that? Yeah. And also, we also, as Jets fans, we wanted to thank them because they are part of the gift of Trevor Lawrence. Let's not forget what the Jets did for us a couple years ago when they went out to L.A. and won. I know they're not meaningless to you, the player, but to the fans. Oh, there oh, it was. Oh, there it was. The Jets beating L.A. We'll always say thank you, J-E-T-S, as that gave us uh, Trevor Lawrence here in Jacksonville. I think we put Frank Gore into the pride of the Jaguars that day. So, Dan, real quick before we get out of here, 20 seconds. Focus this week as we get ready to play Houston. Yes, absolutely. Um, it's it's getting that revenge game on them, you know. Um, it's and they're playing good football too. They they run the ball well, you know. It's gonna be it's gonna be tough for our defense, um, but we're ready for the challenge, and we just we just want to continue this this whole win streak going and have fun. Yeah, they've been playing hard. I mean, they, they, they just good teams. Close. They just beat the team that the Jaguars yeah. have to beat in that last week, the yeah. Titans. So. so anyway, good luck. Thanks for stopping by. Congratulations, men. Fun time of the year. Yeah, Enjoy absolutely. it. Appreciate Dan it. Arnold, people. Dan freaking Arnold. Merry Christmas, everybody. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Stuart Weber, Dan Hicken, Dan Arnold. Appreciate you watching. Jags go to Houston on Sunday. Take care of business there and then get ready. Could it be Saturday night? Could it be Sunday night at the bank? Flex us to some prime time. We'll see you next time, Monday on Jags Report Live. Thanks for watching the Action Sports Jags, Jags Report Live. Coming to you live from Sneakers, sponsored by Anajar and Levine, Accident Attorneys.